club's in a good way, team's in a good way. How are you guys um, feeling at this point of the, the season? Yeah, I mean, we've obviously had a really good start to the season. We had a couple setbacks early on with the, the loss in the first game and then the loss uh, at Central Coast, but I think we've rebounded really well. Um, together as a group, we're quite connected um, and unified, and I think you guys see that on the pitch, but off the pitch it's the same. Um, but yeah, I think the club's doing great. It's a very powerful season for the Phoenix this year, uh, men's and women's side, and that just goes to show all the hard work that's being done behind the scenes by not only the players and staff, but the, the support staff as well. Yeah, you had quite a motivational tweet, I think, last night. Can you add some context around that? Or? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, there's no, no hiding the fact that there's been some turbulent moments, but um, what happens behind closed doors is is not like visible to everyone. And one moment in in our history right now, it's kind of shining light on the negative sides that don't actually happen consistently in our experiences for one player. So for us as a group, in my experience, I've played at the top level. I've played at Liverpool. I've played with Celtic, and, and I've experienced some of the top of the top. And the stuff that's going on here is better than what I've experienced there. And I think that's really important to highlight and, and show that what has happened and the investment that's been made in this club, although it's not great yet it's still growing and we won't like the woman's side is only three years old so it's about being patient and, and seeing how much has been put in um, and being optimistic about what can happen um, with all this stuff happening. So as you as a more veteran player if I can say that someone who's traveled around the world. But <laughs> I'll take it I'll take it. <laughs> what, what, um, what messages are you then passing on to, to the younger girls on the team? I mean is there Women. a bit of yeah, <laughs> sorry. Appreciate that. No, it's all good. Um, I think for me, it's just about being patient um, and taking the opportunity that you have at your hands and and running with it. I mean, we have the opportunity to, to lay a foundation for the generations to come and the history of this club and the future of this club. So, by us making sure that we're vocal about what we need um, and want, but also being respectful and being aware of what's happening behind the scenes and listening with two ears rather than speaking with just one mouth. Right? And I think that's what this is about. Also remind the players that again this environment is one of the best environments out there there's not many clubs that can compete with the facilities the staff um and the type of style we're playing and the coaching staff and all that kind of stuff. And yes, I know wages could be higher. <laughs> Don't we all wish that? And that's like any female in any industry. But we're growing through that system. Time will tell. It's not just a Phoenix issue. It's an A-League issue. Um, and that's what I just keep on reminding. We're not the only ones. There's more than just us who are struggling with that. And just keeping an open mind. The game's growing. The women's game's growing. And just being patient with that. And, but being a part of that change is important. Yeah, on that pay thing. So I think the, the <laughs> cap uh, for A-League women is like 600000 for the men. It's 2.6 million. Yeah. Are you struggling to survive as a quote unquote professional footballer under this cap? I'm not struggling to survive. Um, look, if I'm going to be bluntly honest, I took a 50% pay cut. It is what it is. Um, but my perspective, I restarted my career. I needed to do that. Yes, the league is paying less than majority of the leagues over uh, across the seas, but look, it's starting, it's a league that's developing. There's time for investment. The World Cup has had a great impact on the two countries combined. And I think within the next two, maybe even year, you're gonna see a massive increase. The demand is there. Um, this incident at our club may have been the one piece of the straw that broke the camel's back and now it's gonna wake everyone up. Am I struggling to survive? No, do I have to be smarter with my money? Yeah, but shouldn't we all? Like the reality is that, and if you were to compare the ma the men's wages right now to the men's wages across seas, it's still a massive deficit. So at the end of the day, yeah, wages are tight. Not everyone is earning well, and some people have to work two jobs. I, I get it, but we're a part of history. We're part of a future that is growing, and I think it's just about being patient and and honoring the moment that we have to have right now to to be the people who make a change in this league, to to speak forward and demand better for for female athletes. And again, it's not just us as footballers; it's female athletes in general. How did Chloe's departure play out from a player's perspective? We we got the announcement last Thursday. Did she pull the group together and tell you how did it all work? Uh, look, but in regards to Chloe's situation, what's said in house, I'm going to just keep in house. I think that's the best way to do it. But the players were. Um hurt and sad to see her leave. She's a big core member. She was one of our captains and also a veteran player at the Phoenix. So to see her leave was really hard, but I think we all uh, respected her standing up for what she believed in for herself, what her values were, um, and need to do what's best for herself and her mental health along with the family that she hopes to pursue with her partner and whatnot. So we all wish Chloe the best. Um, big loss in the locker room, obviously, and a big leader to lose, but at the end of the day, you gotta do what's best for you. So we were proud that she was able to step forward and, and do that for herself. She said on social media that it was more than just pay. Were you surprised that she's come out and said that her values are different to say the club's values? Um, 
yeah, look, from my experiences personally, um, I've had a great time here at Phoenix. So I couldn't understand or relate. There's a lot of stuff that may have happened before I came here with previous staff members that we just can't control right now. Um, so I guess, yeah, surprise would be the right word, but also I have different experiences, right? So what I'm experiencing and what I take seriously may not be the same just because I've been at the top level. I've been in different environments and this environment here is better than what I've experienced, whether it comes to communication, professionalism, um, administrative work, and also the way the coaching staff communicates with us. So again, I'm in a good place with the club. I know a lot of players are in a good place with the club and it's just one player's experience can't talk for everyone. Has it been a distraction this week? No, uh, I don't think so. Luckily, it was the international break, so it happened, and we had four days off just to recover like we naturally would have, so it was good for everyone to go away, go see their families, reset, and come back in for this week for a big game against Melbourne. Um, yeah, I mean, it's always a loss. You're going to lose a player. It's hard, but we're adapting well. We have a very uh, de like deep squad. We have good talent, and it's going to give people opportunities, so it's an exciting opportunity for, for the team to kind of show how resilient we are in that just because we lose a couple of players due to injury and um, resignation, we can still bounce back and, and unite as a group. Speaking of losing players, <sighs> another one, another ACL, that's the sixth ACL injury in the Women's A-League to date just this season. <laughs> How's the team unpacking that first and foremost? Look, it just like anyone, any injury is hard. Uh, and I first and foremost agree that there's uh, issues within the female game that are causing ACL tears, but I think as a group, it's always hard to see a player who has been working so hard, who's up and coming, got her first call up into Ferns for like been a while, um, and it's, it's been stressful. I mean, to see a player have to go through that turmoil, again, me firsthandly knowing how tough recoveries are, it's sad. When we lost Wiz, that was really hard, and I think the group, we're special, we're really connected off the field, so we're going to unite behind Marisa, but yeah, it's tough. And, and in regards to it being the sixth uh, ACL, in this league, I don't think we can look at it just this league. I think we got to look at it at a global perspective. Last year in the WSL, Arsenal had four in a whole season, and that goes to speak to the volumes of just the female body. But I will speak on the fact that I believe that the game for women is growing. Um, but we didn't have the foundational development as men did early on. So we're trying to accelerate the growth of the female game, play more games, play in a higher intensity, more tournaments and whatnot, more international fixtures. But our bodies weren't developed for that way and we're programmed to sustain that impact. So that's what you're seeing a difference in. I think this generation is going to take the blow as we're seeing, but the next generations to come, we're implementing new things. And it's just a matter of, I guess, ironing up the creases. Like I said, the women's game's growing. Pay, injury, medical, whatever you name it. So it's an unfortunate situation, but it happens. Mm, I mean, and so what are, how, how is the team processing this? Uh, you know, are you talking about injury prevention, rest and recovery, how to limit ACL tears? <laughs> I mean, I know injury prevention is a tough one. But. Yeah, I mean, we all have our own programs when it comes to getting ready for training sessions every single day. I think we all spend at least an hour in the gym prior to going out to the pitch. And then when we're on the pitch, we do specific injury prevention measures when we're warmed up. So everything's being done. Preventing an ACL is so hard. Like some things are genetic and you see it on the men's side too. I know male players who have torn their ACL three times and it's all about your, your genetics and your structure and your physiology and all that kind of stuff. So we do the most we can here. We have state of the art facilities here. I know you guys are experiencing that right now. So there's literally everything on hand. And if it's not on hand, the club source it out for us to make sure that we are performing and recovering at the best of our abilities. Um, again, that's something that not the top, like no top club has. So I think, yeah, we all take advantage of the system. We all take advantage of what we have and it's just a matter of growing through the system and maybe it means on the off season we're putting in more work making ourselves more robust so that when we come into season it's not a big shock um, but yeah there's so many rhymes reasons and explanations for what we could do are we at crisis point no no I don't think there's a chance to worry I think we have players in the squad we have players who are experienced we have players who are up and coming who are hungry to play and get minutes um, and that's exciting we have young youth talent who are emerging through the new zealand program and i think it's exciting to see that obviously we have three open spots to bring in players which is a great opportunity to add depth to the squad um, but i trust the coaching staff and I think that's what we all should do as well. They know what they're doing. They, they know how to manage this kind of stuff. It's, it's part of the game, right? It's part of the job. And no coach wants to deal with it, but they've handled it well. And I think as a team, we've handled it well. So when the guys were here earlier, I asked them about ACL injuries. And they said it comes down to mentality. Um, uh, as, someone, as someone who's come through injuries, <laughs> is, it, is mentality part of it? 
When it comes to recovery, yeah. I think uh, mentality is a big part of the recovery. How you, how you bounce back from things, just like in any adversity, whether it's an injury, turmoil, a loss in life, you, you gotta bounce back. And mentally, what you commit to and what you, you decide to do to yourself and for yourself uh, determines how good you come out of it. And also how more robust you are and how you react when you train again. Like I, we have a player, Liv, right now who's coming back from ACL and you can see it in her eyes, she's hungry, she's excited, she's pushing herself every day, and that mentality is exciting to see from a young player. We have that with Wiz and Marisa as well, and I have no fear of that. But yeah, I guess you can say mentality, it, it is an aspect of a, a really wholesome recovery, and that's what helped me get through it, and I can only speak of myself, but yeah. It's pretty horrific, like, yeah. the, whole, the whole process is pretty horrific. Oh, 100%, like a long-term injury is dreadful. I wish no one to go through it. Luckily, they don't have to do two years. I think we can all just celebrate that fact. Um, two years is too long to do recovery. Don't w wish it upon anyone, but yeah, no. We have the great support staff. They're gonna have the best of the best physios, the best of the best treatment, a great facility to do whatever they need to do. And I think that's what's exciting is that they have that around them and a good support like group to, to push them forward. Sorry, I've dominated all the questions far too much. Anyone else? <laughs>